Hi friends, we are going to take uh, the chemistry of amino acids. So before starting the topic, I just want to tell you something like small steps in the right direction can turn out to be the biggest step in your life. Don't think that we can make a biggest leap in a single jump. Small, small steps will make a big leap in your life. This you can apply when you are preparing for your PG exams as well. The basic thing is that nobody can gather all the information in a single day. If I am taking a class also, you cannot gather every information in a single time. But see, small, small uh, drops will be there in every class. And if you go with your friends, try to exchange the ideas and then you will get a small drop or you will, you will make a small step. See, these small, small steps will make the biggest leap. Or in other words, we all know the little drops of water is going to make the mighty ocean. No, no ocean is you cannot form without a single drop. See, these drops will make the biggest leap or biggest ocean in your life. So with a small note of message, we'll start the topic of chemistry of amino acids. So the chapter outline that we are going to take in the chemistry of amino acids is the first we are going to see who is an amino acid. What's the concept of amino acid? Then we'll try to classify the amino acid. Then we have to learn a little bit about the derived amino acids. And along with this, we learn about some amino acids like selenocysteine. Then we learn about the properties, the titration curve, the chemistry of proteins a little bit. Then we have to learn the structure of proteins. And finally, after everything, uh, we have to know just some overview of the protein folding and the protein sorting. So let me start with the introduction to an amino acid. Let me ask you a question. Can you identify these structures? Can you identify if I am marking this or if I'm highlighting this side chain? Can you identify it? No, it is difficult, right? So if I am identifying or I am marking this ring, can you identify it? No, it is very difficult. You see, there are 20 or 21 amino acids and there are 19 more subjects. How can we learn everything? See, I am going to take this chemistry of amino acid in a very simple way, not giving the structures of all the amino acid, but the smallest thing or the striking characteristics that you have to notice in every amino acid. And then we are going to learn about it. If this kind of question is asked, from which of the following amino acid melanin is derived from? And you are getting a series of this kind of structures then you would be embarrassed, you know, how will I identify? I know it is formed from phenylalanine and tyrosine, but I cannot identify phenylalanine or tyrosine here. That will be your state. So how we can simply identify this structure? See, this is what we are going to learn now. That is why we need to know about the chemistry of amino acids. So first, let me introduce the hero of today, which is an amino acid. What is an amino acid and what is its concept? The basic concept is, you know, the genes. The genes can do its function, you know, it by being converted to proteins. Like these proteins are the workhorses of the genes. Like the proteins is having regulatory functions. It has signal transduction. Then we know the most important thing are the enzymes. All these are proteins. So what are these proteins? These proteins are made up of amino acids. So amino acids are the building blocks of the proteins. It's the first thing that we should understand. So, they are the building blocks. So, amino acids are the building blocks of the proteins. So, That's the first thing that we should understand. Now, we are going to see who is an amino acid. The amino acid has a central carbon atom in it. So, I am first drawing that carbon atom here. This carbon atom is called as the alpha carbon atom. 
to this alpha carbon atom two groups are attached the first group is an NH2 group and to this a uh, COOH is attached so how many valencies do a carbon has it has four valencies so I have filled only two valencies now and this is left with two more so this will be a hydrogen and below if you are seeing you can see an R group here so an amino acid is having first an amino group so it is an amino then you can see this is a carboxylic acid so totally this is an amino acid every amino acid this structure this thing is common to all amino acid then what makes alanine different from glycine different from serine that is based on its variable side chain so that is what I'm given here this alpha carbon atom is attached to a variable side chain this variable side chain makes one amino acid different from the other so this is the general structure of an amino acid this is the first thing that we have to know if and uh, let me tell you some points here so that is most amino acids are alpha amino acid what do you mean by this alpha amino acid the alpha amino acid means this alpha group uh, sorry the amino group and the carboxylic acid group is attached to the alpha carbon atom that's why they are called as alpha amino alpha amino acid that's why it is called as alpha amino acid most of the amino acids are alpha amino acid the second thing that you should understand is that is there any other known alpha amino acids in our body yes there are known alpha amino acids i just enlist them the known alpha amino acids are the most important is the beta alanine then beta amino iso butyrate gamma amino iso butyrate so these are some of the non alpha amino acid out of this we will be learning about this beta alanine uh, along with the chemistry of amino acid itself So we have seen what is an alpha, uh, what is an amino acid, and what is an alpha amino acid. And remember, all the alpha amino acid and all the amino acid is having this group common. That is the amino group, the carboxylic acid group, and the H. Now we are going to see, or now we are going to classify the amino acid. There are different classifications of amino acid. The classification of amino acid is one based on the side chain. Then based on the side chain characteristics the second is based on the metabolic fate the fourth one is based on the nutritional requirement so first we will be seeing the classification based on the side chain so here i am asking a question the question is why amino acids are classified based on its side chain is there any specific reason that we are naming or we are giving or we are uh, classifying the amino acid based on the side chain yes the reason is you know if i am drawing an amino acid here h and the r so this is what amino acid i am adding here one more amino acid nh2 c cooh H and R. So you can see here two amino acid when they join, you know, this OH and one of this hydrogen will be removed as water. 
which I'll be showing you later also. So now you understand these two amino acids join and if they join, we will get the NH, C, H here, R here, then CO, OH is removed. Now this will be attached to this NH, that H is removed from there. You can see this is H, this is COOH and this is R. So this what is formed as a, a bond is formed here. Can you name this bond? Yeah, this is a peptide bond. So you can see here a peptide bond. So likewise, if one more amino acid is joined here, you can see that this OH will be removed and there one more NH will be attached and you can see there will be an alpha carbon atom here, an H here, an R here, again a COOH here. Like So like this you can see again this is a peptide bond. So when the amino acids are joined together by the peptide bond, the COOH and the NH3 group is or the NH2 group is engaged into the linkage. Then which are the only functional group remaining which is determining a protein, a property of a protein or a property of a polypeptide chain is the free group here. What is the free group in all these things? This which is extending outward from this uh, peptide bone backbone as the side chain. So, the first, you know, when we are classifying the property of a protein depends on the property of this side chain which is the free group in every amino acid because the other functional group like the NH2 and the COH is engaged into a linkage. The only bond that the CONH can form will be a hydrogen bond. So, this peptide bond can form only a hydrogen bond. It is not free for any other reaction. So, that is why we are classifying the amino acid based on the side chain. So now we are going to see which are the amino acid and the classification of amino acid based on the side chain. Based on the side chain, the first thing is aliphatic. The aliphatic amino acid. The aliphatic amino acid is again classified into two. You know, aliphatic means they have a straight hydrocarbon chain like CH3, CH2, CH2, etc. So, this aliphatic amino acid, you can see here, it is again classified into two. The first one is a simple, and the second is the branched chain. Simple and the branched chain amino acid. The simple amino acid is again divided into the two simple amino acids are glycine, the three letter abbreviation is GLY or we write it as G. So glycine and alanine. The three letter abbreviation is ALA or we can also write A. So this is the simple amino acid. So let me tell you what is the structure or how will you identify a structure of glycine here and alanine. Almost all the important structures I will tell you, you don't have to learn all the 20 structures, all the important ones I will be telling you. So here the glycine is, you know, whenever you are writing, you start with the amino group, you can see the alpha carbon atom here which is attached to COOH. So that is an amino acid and this is attached to a hydrogen. I told you this is common to all amino acid. Now to this alpha carbon atom only one H is attached then it is called as glycine, right. Now I am going to draw the structure of alanine. Alanine is you can see NH2, C, COOH, H. So this is common to all. Now we have to draw only that side chain. This side chain is a CH3. So this is called as an alanine. Okay, so you just have to learn this much, the side chain. So by seeing the side chain, you can identify which is that amino acid. So this is glycine and this is alanine. Now coming to the second group, which is called as the branched chain amino acid. The branched chain amino acids are, I used to teach it like this, L, I, V. What is this L, I and V? L, I and V is leucine, isoleucine and valine. 
So, these are called as the branched chain amino acid. You don't have to learn the structure of all these branched chain amino acid. Just know one thing. When you are seeing a branch in the side chain, then they are all branched chain amino acid. So, if you are seeing a branch in it, then that is called as a branched chain amino acid. Just know that much. You don't have to. You cannot learn every amino acid structure. The second is the hydroxyl group containing amino acid. The hydroxyl group containing amino acids can be divided into serine, threonine and one more is there which is a hydroxyl group containing but I will be writing about this amino acid once more when I am saying about aromatic as well. So, which is an aromatic hydroxyl group containing amino acid is tyrosine. So, that completes the list of hydroxyl group containing amino acid. I will just show you the structure of the most important one that you have to learn that is serine. The serine is also the same thing NH2, C, H here, COOH here. This is common to all amino acid. Then what makes a serine different is it is having a side chain CH2 and this is attached to a hydroxyl group. So, this is called as a uh, uh, the this is called as one of the hydroxyl group containing amino acid which is serine and serine we write it the three letter abbreviation is SCR and S is the single letter abbreviation likewise the threonine is THR and T and tyrosine is TYR and the tyrosine is also starting with the T so we used to write it as Y. So, this are the uh, uh, hydroxyl group containing amino acid and out of that the most important structure you have to learn I have told you that is serine. The next one which is coming under the third one will be the acidic amino acid. The acidic amino acid is aspartic acid. Aspartic acid, glutamic acid. The aspartic acid is ASP and glutamic acid is GLU. And you remember this aspartic acid if it is ionized, that means if the side chain, I will tell you about that later. So, aspartic acid, if the side chain is in the ionized state, we also call it as aspartate. Likewise, in the side chain, there is a extra carboxylic acid group. Then in the case of glutamic acid, if that carboxylic acid group is in an ionized state, then we call it as glutamate. This aspartate and glutamate. So, now I will show you how to identify the structure of aspartic acid and glutamic acid. So, for that also you follow the same rule that I am telling you. First, we have to, yes, this we have to see, uh, draw the general structure that you are seeing in all the amino acid NH2, C, COOH and H. Then the most characteristic feature of an acidic amino acid is it is having an extra carboxylic acid group in its variable side chain. So, the extra carboxylic acid group in the variable side chain is the first thing that you have to note. The second thing is how many carbon atoms are there. Like aspartic acid you know it can be de derived from one of its keto acid or which is the corresponding keto acid of aspartic acid. It is oxaloacetate. You know how many carbon atoms are there in oxaloacetate? The same number of carbon atom will be there in aspartic acid as well. What is this oxaloacetate? Oxaloacetate is having four carbon atom. So, we know that the aspartic acid is also having how many carbon atom? It is having uh, four carbon atom. So, how many carbon atoms we have drawn till now? We have uh, drawn two. This is one, this is two. Now, we have to draw more how many that is we have to two more we have to draw that is C and C here. And the next characteristic thing that we should know is this is having an extra carboxylic acid group which means this will be always in the terminal point. So, there is one more COOH group that is why it is called as an acidic amino acid the extra carboxylic acid group in the variable side chain. 
Now I just want to fill this valency with hydrogen that completes the structure of aspartate. Likewise, I am going to draw the structure of glutamic acid. Follow the same rule. First, we have to draw what is common to all. So this makes everything very simple. Now what we have to draw is what is extra in the glutamic acid. What is extra in the glutamic acid is I am going to add how many more carbon atoms. So glutamate, what is the corresponding keto acid of glutamate? Alpha keto glutrate. If you have any idea how many carbon atom in an alpha keto glutrate, it has 5 carbon atom. So till now we have drawn only 2. So we have to draw 3 more. So I am going to add these 3 more here. So 1, 2 and 3. Almost every time the terminal will be the COOH. So I am going to add the COOH here. So which means and I am just filling this valencies of the hydrogen of the carbon with hydrogen and that completes the structure of glutamic acid and this is aspartic acid. So very simply we have learned the glutamic acid and aspartic acid. And what do you mean by this glutamate and aspartate? Glutamate and aspartate means if the COOH group is in an ionized state, most of the time in our body it is seen in an ionized state. So we call it as aspartate and glutamate. Okay. So I think it is clear to you. Along with this acidic amino acid, I am going to uh, show the next group which is called as the amides. So the third is amides. What do you mean by the amides? Amides means they have a special group in it and that is called as the CONH2 group. So in the acidic amino acid, what is the special group that you are seeing is a COOH group. Here it is a CONH2 group. That's the first thing that you should know. And regarding the amides, so which are the amides? The amides are number one, asparagine. and glutamine, asparagine and glutamine. The three letter abbreviation is ASN and the other is GLN, GLN. So this is the three letter abbreviation. Now I am just going to make this aspartic acid and asparagine and glutamic acid a glutamine. It's very simple. So we are Simply in the same structure we have drawn, I am going to make these two amino acid, the aspartic acid to asparagine first. Simply you remember this, that is the last thing here is CONH2. So now if that is the case, this is ASN, asparagine, very simple. Now what is glutamine? I am just cutting this. I am just replacing this with the special group here which is CONH2 group. So that makes two amino acids here that is and this is glutamine. Okay, So this is the difference asparagine and glutamine.